Welcome back to the Build Day Live here at Supermicro. I'm joined for this video by Jerry Dean. Yep. Jerry, welcome. And can you tell the lovely folks at home what your job role here is at Supermicro? I'm the System Solution Manager and I handle the Ultra product family. And we've got a couple of the Ultra servers here. So what's the basic concept for the Ultra? What makes them different from the other products in the massive portfolio? I'm glad you asked that. So Ultra is one of the unique servers that we happen to have. It's focused more on the enterprise class um, products, and it can really go beyond that. But what makes Ultra really stand out is its versatility because of the modular design as well as the vast expansion and storage capabilities that our servers can have. But the, there's real consistency through the, the series as well. We were talking before that it's a single motherboard across That's the series. So yeah. I, I can treat them just as if they're sort of larger and smaller versions of the same thing. Exactly. One common building block, which is the motherboard, and then you can switch out like you know backplanes, risers, and it can configure into a completely different server. That's why we have a comprehensive, extensive line of the Ultra family, but it has that one building block. And these are your mainstream, consistent kind of servers that are targeted at an enterprise that wants uh, as few decision points as they can, but a bit, a bit of flexibility. So these typically come as a, a, a ready-to-boot system. That is correct. Um, so the customer, it's going to be built to order. Customer is going to put in um, their requirements for CPU, memory, hard drives, and um, you know, just select the type of ultra that they're looking for, and they're ready to go. And that's much more like the enterprise buying experience. Some of the other products are oriented much more towards the cloud buying experience where there's just a recipe of parts and you can put together exactly what you want, which is great for cloud providers, but it tends not to lead to the experience that enterprises want with some consistency of support. That's correct. We really want just to try to simplify everything for the customer. So they just put in what they need and it's ready to go. So we've got two servers here. These represent the, the one U is the, the smaster scale in this. There's a 2U, are there larger models as well? Uh, no, for the Ultra family, okay. we're doing with rack mounts, so it's going to be a 1U, 2U with um, a lot of great features. Right, and we've got, in particular, they're all NVMe. Uh, yeah. This is one of the, the cool things that I see in the range of products that I've got. <laughs> Sitting in the next room, I've got a bunch more high-performance storage products. So this is all NVMe across the front. That's great. Um, Ten drives in, in the uh, 1U, and how many have we got in this 2U? T is going to be a 24. Right, yes. so horizontal in here and uh, and vertical orientation in the in the two U as as usual. That is correct. Yeah. And there, let me see if I can pop one of these out without getting to the front. Um, this is the standard 15 millimeter carrier, whatever drive you can put. Uh, not in the NVMe, you wouldn't put spinning rust, but if this was a, a SAS or or a SATA configuration, I could have some spinning hard drive in here. That's correct. We would have a, a different server with a different backplane, but yes, you could have the SATA SAS configuration as well too. And then there's a bucket of NVMe in this one. Yeah, so just really quickly, if you don't mind, I'll talk mm. a little bit about the NVMe. So um, the way that these two actually differentiate each other is that um, the 1U10 NVMe is what we call direct attach. So it means that we're providing the full pipeline, four PCI Express lanes per drive. So you're going to get the best performance out of each NVMe drive. On the 2U24, because we have 24 drives, you need a lot more PCI you're Express out of lanes. lanes. Exactly. So you're going to be limited in terms of how many lanes you can pull out of the CPU because you have a whole bunch of I.O. that you also need to support. So um, just to make it plain and simple and just easy to understand is that we do have to have PCI Express switches in this particular platform. The benefit with the 2U24 is that you increase the overall NVMe density um, by 24 drives, so you can support that many NVMEs, but you also gain two full by 16 PCI Express lanes per processor. So if you want to put 100G NICs on here, right. it's a great combination. And you'd have a lot of, of front-end, um, a back-end performance here in the uh, NVMe, uh, and get all of that depth of queuing that you get with NVMe that's so critical for the, the shared storage workloads. That is correct. And still get sort of that balanced throughput because what you don't want to do is dedicate all of your PCIe lanes to, to the NVMe and have nothing left to get the I.O. Exactly. out. Exactly. You've got a consuming. great box that's doing all this computation, but you need a great network to also put the information out. Right. And that one will tell you. You've got certified 100 gig mix for this? We do. We do. Yeah, we have awesome. multiple vendors that we're working with. It's kind of hard to believe that I'm talking about 100 gig as being available and, and uh, a sensible decision now because uh, <laughs> the gray here kind of indicates that I started back when 10 meg was a, a good network. Yeah. That's a very long time ago. I want to have a quick look inside 
this guy, um, so we say it's the same motherboard as in this one, it's just a little easier to see inside this fella. Yeah. Um, if we slide him back, it really is just very standard server kind of things in, in parts. You have lots and lots of DIMM slots. Uh, being a, a, um, a demo one, there's not a lot in there, but you can see there's a lot of capacity for it, dual sockets. Um, this is that huge amount of PCI Express going forward to the NVMe drives, and that's the direct one. Those are every lane is direct in. That's correct. So the architecture that we happen to have for the Ultra platform is that you pretty much hit all the common or the, the key traits. Uh, dual processors on all Ultra products, it's going to have 24 DIMMs. Um, the benefit with that is that not only can you utilize it for the memory, but you also can use it for, you know, like MV DIMMs and, you know, in the future when uh, new storage comes out on the DIMMs itself, um, you can actually utilize it on the Ultra platform. So you're going to be ready when things like um, the Intel Optane comes out as DIMMs for that, that application acceleration. Yep, we're actually doing a lot of testing on those type of DIMMs. That's so. the nice thing of being just down the road from Intel. Oh, for sure. And it's showing a lot of great promise. Um, the other thing, too, is that you also mentioned is going to be the configuration that we happen to have in here. And as I mentioned earlier was that this particular 1U10, it's pretty much our performance piece because we allocated the full amount of PCI Express lanes to the 10 drives. And what that means, it means that we pulled 40 PCI Express lanes among both processors to give you the best possible performance. Uh, coming out of this box. So this would be an outstanding high-end database server. For sure. And uh, we we're discussing that you might also choose to use a similar model for a, a file server, but rather than using all the NVMe, you might use this um, SAS that's on the motherboard and have a SAS front end, um, or SAS for all of the storage if it was something like a file server and you wanted more capacity uh, at a, without getting a ridiculous cost but yeah. still want that consistent experience of having the same model of servers. Yeah, we actually have a different model that will basically be for um, SATA and SAS configurations. Mm -hmm. um, for SAS, you will need to add an additional controller in there to support SAS, but SATA is going to be out of the box. Okay. Um, it will be a different model because the, the backplane is going to be different. This one is specifically for NVMe. Although mm. one nice thing with the um, Ultra family is that we like to include the flexibility. And with each one of our NVMe products, um, pretty much we have what is called hybrid ports. So as long as the connectivity is plugged into the backplane, like for instance in a 1U10 uh, NVMe, the last four drives can also support SATA and SAS as well, as long as the connectivity is plugged yeah, into the back. Yeah, we've got little um, SATA and SAS connectors on the back of the, uh, the backplane here, which you can't see from that side. Uh, but yes, that, that would then let me have some capacity on one side and some performance and do some tiering if this was being used as a storage appliance. Exactly, because like let's say you had like an OS and you know obviously you don't want to put your OS on NVMEs. Not that you can't, you could, but um, it might be a little bit overkill. So you can put in your standard um, SSDs or SAS drives, you can put into a RAID configuration, and then you can basically have the NVME drives for your database for your application just so data. you can have that fast input output and low latency. And the other place you'd see use for this is where this is being clustered together to build a storage platform, maybe a scale-out NAS or uh, object storage, where a bunch of these together would, yeah. would be built. And I guess you'd probably see that more in, in the 2U, where you've got all that I.O. for the, the cluster I.O. as well as the, the consumption I.O. Yeah. So we've already talked about having the 100 gig Ethernet as, as the way of consuming this. There's quite a few I.O. Op options in here. I see more than a single PCI Express slot available in this, this uh, one U server. Yep. What other options do we have in here? So in this particular case, depending on a one U and two U form factor, we have a wide variety of expansion capabilities. Um, in a one U, we can have up to four slots. In a two U, we can have up to eight slots. So depending on what type of add-on card you want to add in there, if you need four by 16s, we can basically have special risers that can tie those together to give you that four by 16. In this particular case, if you look at this 1U form factor, we actually have a dual-width GPU card um, in this server, which is meant for GPU computing. So and that's, that's unusual to stuff into a 1U server, because usually there's a lot of thermal problems and power supply problems in order to put that, that kind of device in here. And I imagine there's, there's probably some, uh, some deployment guides on that, but it's unusual to even be able to put it in a 1U server. Oh, that is 100% correct. And one of the things that we've done um, with our engineering is really work on that overall thermal design. So we're able to accommodate dual width 300 watt GPUs and sufficiently cool down the system um, to be utilized. So 
Uh, it's pretty amazing of what we're able to do, but a lot of our servers support the GPUs. And that pipelining of, of really high performance storage out the front into really high performance GPU inside, it must be very good for the AI machine learning uh, model training. For sure, because they're looking for latency and fast storage. So high throughput, low latency, that's the name of the game. Great. Well, thank you very much, Jerry Dan. Um, this has been talking about the Supermicro uh, Ultra, Super Server Ultra yep. series. Uh, stay on the line for more videos from the Build Day Live here at Supermicro.